I think Jim will be on in a minute. I was just on the phone with him. So. He's down here now. I, I don't know. He might be. I'll, I'll go check on him. See, see, what, see what his status is. I'll be right there. Right. I think we have one minute or so. I don't know. Oh, 630. I've got 630 on mine, so. Um, He's down here now. I, I don't know. He might be. I'll, I'll go check on him. See what, see what his status is. I'll be right there. Right. We have one minute or so. Um, oh, Whoa. I've got 630 on mine, so. Um, He's down here now. in a time loop. We keep hearing that audio bit over and over. All right. Well, six thirty. So. We'll be mindful of everybody's time and start on time. Welcome. Thank you for attending the uh, Board of Public Safety meeting for the city of Wildwood. And uh, we'll start uh, first by welcoming Steve. Thank you. I, I seem to have disappeared somewhere. Uh oh, well, uh, I see you. Not sure where the heck I'm at. I think we my camera you. needs to be off. But Can you see me? Because, oh, wait a minute. Let me try here. It, it, dis it disappeared on me, but let me see what's going on here. There we go. Sorry about that. I was trying to find something else and you all disappeared. So thank you. Yeah, welcome. So uh, let's start with the roll call, Michelle. All right. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All righty. Um, so we have Marshall Scott Collier. Yep. Uh, Denny Welker. Here. Uh, Lynette Baker. Here. Jeff Baker. Here. John Bradley. All right, Council Member Dave Bernalino. Here. And Captain Mundell. Here. And it looks like we also have sitting in, we have Sergeant Brad Wendling and um, Interim City Administrator, uh, Steve Cross. Oh, and Director of Public Works, Rick Brown. Inimitable, Rick Brown. So, uh, we have the roll call. Next up, uh, approval of the minutes. We were all sent the minutes in advance. I hope you had a chance to take a look at them. Does anybody have any questions, concerns, or amendments? Hearing none, I'll accept that as a motion for acceptance. Uh, any objection to accepting the minutes as presented? Hearing none, the minutes are accepted by acclamation. Great. Uh, now we move into the public comment portion. Um, Steve or Michelle, do we have anyone uh, in the queue? Uh, we not, do we actually. Um, I can move him over. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll ask him. He sent. He sent a public comment, but then also said he wanted to sit in. Um, he's here to talk about uh, Thunderhead Canyon Great. and um, speeding. And his name is Benjamin Kinkle. Hold on just a moment here. Oh, did you move him over? Yeah, he's he oh, I think someone's coming in. Oh, great. Sure, the video, <clears throat> well, I mean, we can, um, Take some time to write a comment. Oh, you're muted. Hold on. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mr. Kegel. thanks for Welcome. coming. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? You know, I can't complain. I apologize for my uh, lackadaisical look, but I've got a three year old <laughs> and a one year old, and, you know, that's just the lifestyle I live. So, <laughs> but, you know, here's, here's the reality. The good thing is, is I use Zoom about, oh, I don't know, six or seven times a day. So I've become pretty acclimated to the, uh, the uh, interface. So, awesome. Anywho, awesome. So I will, I can make this, you know, I can make it shorter, quicker or long, but so there's uh, obviously there's an issue in, in, in front of our house. And so I'm at 474 Thunderhead, but there's four houses right here um, between my house and the stop sign at Prospector. And I know last month it came up and it was tabled and it was really addressing more of a 
cut through traffic issue, mm -hmm. a volume uh, issue. Right. Um, so, and, and then I had a, I think it was officer Richie actually stopped at my house last Wednesday. Um, so they did a speed study. I, my assumption, my, my understanding is from Wednesday to Wednesday. So that was yesterday ended it. Um, so I don't know what the results are, if you guys have that, but, um, I'm, I'm actually the least tenured of all the neighbors here. So we've lived here for a year and a half. Um, our neighbors have lived here for, I'm thinking 10 and everybody else has been six or eight. Um, and so I think the, the alarming and concerning, con you know, issue is, you know, this has been brought up several times by all of the neighbors. Um, you know, my dad was here a week and a half ago watching our dog while we were in Chicago and he stepped outside and he said, it's amazing how fast people drive on the street. And, you know, he's like, you know, I don't have a radar gun, but I would imagine people are driving 50, 55 miles an hour. Um, so, you know, I even talked to officer Richie and, you know, it's, I, I think that, you know, he even said, you know, we'll post a, you know, patrolman here increase at the stop sign. Cause you know, that's a, a major issue. Um, but I think the, the overarching theme is just a, it's a public safety. And obviously that's what we're talking about here is a public safety issue. Um, you know, I don't know if 25 miles an hour, but you know, I had an officer, I stopped an officer, I guess probably three weeks ago and you know, I'm a massive law enforcement, you know, fan. So I have no problem just talking to some of them, you know, other people may have that, but I, I'm, I'm the anti guy. I'm, I'd love to talk to him, but I said, you know, I, I see some speed issues in front of my house. And he said, you know, we run radar, but our, our give is five to seven miles an hour. And so what I would pose to the board here is, you know, would you be comfortable with somebody driving 32 miles an hour in front of your home? Um, because our speed limit is 25. Um, and it's not to knock that officer. I understand that there are, there are gives and takes. Um, but I would also address, um, and I, and I'll preface this. I have aunts and uncles that have been police officers, firefighters. My grandfather retired from the St. Louis city police department, massive proponent, what these guys do, I could never do. And I have a degree in criminal justice, but, uh, almost a week and a half ago on Monday, um, Lafayette high school had their big TPing parade. And so, you know, we have a senior right around the corner of us, you know, people are driving 60 miles an hour through the streets. And, you know, we had four patrol cars drive past our house with no lights on probably doing 50 or 55 miles an hour. So, you know, there's also a, a precedence, right? You know, how, what's, what are we setting as an example? But, you know, I don't mean to lament and go on and on and on, but I think there's a, I think there's a very large concern with speed. Um, you know, the traffic in front of our houses, people cutting through from 109 over to Manchester through West Glen Farms. Um, and I guess I would just say, you know, this isn't the first time it's come up is, you know, what can we do? I understand EMS vehicles have to come through the, the streets and we can't do speed bumps, but is there something else we can do? I mean, you know, they have these little silver hockey pucks down in Florida and in Vegas that go on the, on the ground. Um, and they're basically speed deterrents. Um, and they're approved for EMS vehicles. Um, but, you know, I, I guess I, as, as I started this, not intentionally, but with a three-year-old and a one-year-old, um, I don't feel safe with my kids playing in my front yard. And I have almost an acre. And it, it's just a, it's a massive concern for me. Well, thank you for that. Um, no, and I, and I, I do appreciate your concern uh, as a father of three myself. Um, Jim? You guys, you guys did the speed survey, and and Ben, I, I do appreciate you um, contacting us as you did uh, when we got that email. And I apologize, I didn't get back to you right away. Right. But, uh, we did contact uh, Captain Mundell at the PD to have them, you know, take a look at that street in particular, because the last time we were talking about it, it was, I, if I remember right, it was a volume issue, not a speed issue. So, Jim, what did you, what did we learn? Uh, well, the speed survey is done. I don't have the. Uh the stat report done yet because it just ended up yesterday. We have to draw the equipment back in and, and download it and everything. So, um, you know, at this point, what we normally do is, is do the speed survey. It kind of tells us if there's a, uh, if there's an issue there. Um, you know, you've obviously indicated there's an issue. And at this point you'll see, you know, an officer up there for, for enforcement purposes. So, uh, hopefully that helps out it. This is a, Speeding and stop signs are a widespread issue. Uh, you know, the, the, I think the board can tell you that every subdivision, you know, will will make that complaint. And 
as far as the uh, construction of the road, I'll defer to Rick uh, for that because Public Works is obviously, uh, you know, that's their their bailiwick as far as you know how the road should be signed or or posted or you know putting obstacles things you know that that you mentioned and I've never seen those uh, those items you're talking about. It sounds interesting though as far as the uh, the hockey puck things. Go ahead, Mr. Kenkel. Yeah. So so the other thing I would say is and and this is just I you know just as everybody's talking, but, you know, you, you drive through certain areas of, of St. Louis County and um, I'm just, I'm just a little Jefferson County boy who grew up in, you know, down in, in High Ridge, you know, I've done very well, but you know, that's, it, it, it's total, I guess it's different, but, but one of the thing I do like is in certain neighborhoods, you see a sign that says radar enforced, you know, St. Louis County radar enforced and, and whether or not that, that does anything. And I'm, I'm looking at my phone for a reason here, but I had my neighbor find a sign um, and I'm going to hold it up here to, to the, uh, my camera. So hopefully everyone can see this. It's, uh, it's reversed, but it says, slow down. This is not a racetrack. Now this is, we, we put these up. So the neighbor next to me, he actually makes signs for a living. And we had just in the first day that it was put up, the decrease in speeds was just ast astronomical. I mean, people came flying down the street and saw it. And I mean, crawled past our house, but within 24 hours, it was like the signs didn't exist. Um, so it's it's obvious that folks understand that they're driving too fast. Um, and I, I, this may go crazy out on the limb, but it's like it's almost as if it's it won't be an issue until we have somebody hit by a car, and then it's like, oh my gosh, we need to address this. And I and I and to your point, speeding is an issue in any any neighborhood, right? I I 100% agree. Stop signs are an issue. It's like you know those are the the major, you go to case net. It's like, what do people get pulled over for rolling a speed limit speeds or a stop sign and, you know, speeding. Um, but it's, it's just, I mean, it's crazy. I, I, I would almost invite folks to come social distance in my driveway and I would buy a case of beer and we'll have a radar gun and we'll just sit here and run radar. I mean, I'm telling you from six to 8 AM and then from about four 30 to seven, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, so and I mean, really I totally do it. I, I pay for everybody's Ubers to go home, you know? I mean, it's, 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 it's just kind of that, that situation. So I don't mean to lament on, so I will, you can cut no, me no. off at any point. No, we need your, obviously we need your perspective because we're not there like you are. So it's important, you know, for folks like yourself to let us know. Um, so I do know because uh, Mr. Mr. Brown, Rick Brown and I have had a few conversations in the past week Um one idea, and it's actually on the agenda for tonight, one of the things that we had looked into for various places is um, speed limit signs that have like a flashing lights that go around them. So like whether it's in a neighborhood or wherever that the idea we're considering purchasing those, I mean, I, I don't know if something like that would be helpful but to the point of what you were saying, you had the black and gold signs, maybe something that's to attract the eye and remind people, I think the sign lights up when it detects a car coming towards it. So it's not yeah. all the time. And it just- There's starts, one, well, regardless there's one of in our neighborhood that's actually digital. There's one in our neighborhood that's just, I don't know what direction I think that is actually west. So mm -hmm. just west of Prospector, um, that's actually a digital. So it says 25 miles an hour, and then it actually tells you how fast you're driving. Ah. Um, so- you know, you could, you could post those in front of my, in front of my house. Like I'd, I'd be happy with, you know, you know, wherever you want to put them, but um, you know, I, 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 any, any effort or any movement would be just okay. amazing. And those, those display signs, we use those and move those around periodically too. They're, they're good feedback. Like I said, uh, they show the driver what, what they're going. Now there are those that would want to challenge the sign and see uh, how fast they can make it right. go. But, um, but you know, again, that's, that's another tool we use and, and we'll use, you know, up in your, uh, in your area. Um, you know, we'll start with enforcement and, and see where we go with that. You know, as we've said, we can't have a guy on every street, you know, that the fact that you, you gave me some times there, that's important. I can, I can put a guy in there, you know, during those specific times, because we have an idea of when we need to target. So. I appreciate that feedback. Could whenever the speed survey or study comes out, would we have access to that? 
Uh, generally, we don't publish those. I normally turn those huh. over to Rick. Well, I, and I think we would probably be talking about it at our meeting. So to the extent that we discuss it, um, obviously the meeting's recorded uh, and the minutes are posted. What, um, what I will do is, is have Officer uh, uh, Kircher, I think is who you were talking to. Kircher, yes. Uh, I'll have him follow up with you because um, he, he'd be the one that, that pulls the data out and, and gets the report done. So that would I'll, be have awesome. him, I'll have him follow up with you personally. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Um, anything else for for us? Anything else you can think of, Ben? No. You know, I I, I will say this. You know, my office is in Wildwood. I'm I'm at 109 in Manchester. Um, I, I love the city. Um, I'm an Edward Jones advisor, so I'm right <laughs> next to Wildwood Pub. Um, so you know, I I love the city. Um, I love everything about it. We moved out here for a reason. Um, so. You know, just the fact that y'all invited me and let me speak says, you know, speaks to your character and I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. You are more than welcome to stay for the bulk of the meeting. Um, but I know you have a one and a three year old, so you may have other priorities. I've got bath time coming up here in about 10 minutes. So, you know, I'm awesome. going to, I'm going to go do that. I, I appreciate okay. all's time and uh, appreciate you looking into this. Absolutely. Thank you so yeah, much. Take care and be safe. Take care now. Okay, that was good. Um, I noticed that Teresa Clark was present as an okay. attendee. Um, I just forwarded it over to the panelists. So Council Member um, Clark is now a panelist. So. Okay, so she has public comment. Um, and, yeah, I don't know if she's on for a comment or not. Uh, I guess that'd be the question. Council Member Clark, are you um, intending to provide a public comment at all or? So I guess I'd suggest you raise your hand and we will be glad to take a second. Oh, to... She said, she said no comment. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Well, if you end up with a question or something, just, you know, hit the, hit the hand thing and we'll, uh, we'll recognize you and give you an opportunity. So, uh, okay. We got the public comment part, uh, for information. We have nothing on the agenda, Rick. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. No old business, but we do have some new business. Unless someone has some old business, this is our chance. Nope, new business. So the first one um, is a biggie. Uh, it's a review of the police budget. Captain? Yes, so uh, I believe everyone had, had a, uh, a copy of the cost sheet. I hope everyone has a copy of the cost sheet for uh, police budget. These are, it's pretty much standardized. Um, you know, the cost of a police officer is, is X number of dollars. And that includes the officer salary. It's, it's actually an average for the department. So uh, you're not paying exactly for, you know, the officers that are here. We might have some newer officers and we might have more uh, experienced or senior officers. Uh, so it's, it's an average cost, including uh, the uh, fringes benefits, um, a little chunk of that for uh, supervision, um, vehicle costs, uh, you know, other support services for, for each officer. So that's, that's where the, uh, the price comes. Um, beyond that, uh, the, the supplemental supervision, uh, you know, the precinct commander, myself, uh, my, my uh, deputy commander is a lieutenant. So those are above uh, what we normally uh, would have, you know, per officer. Uh, and then the, the uh, additional sergeant is for our, our neighborhood policing sergeant, uh, Sergeant Wendling. Uh, office administrator is our, our clerk who basically does a lot of our support services uh, behind the scenes. Uh, she also works very closely with the, uh, the court and the prosecutor's office to uh, help prepare cases, you know, provide information regarding uh, tickets or arrests, uh, things like that to assist the uh, court's operation. Uh, the court protection security, that's the, uh, the screening of individuals uh, coming into court and providing basically like bailiff services uh, at the court. 
you know, to ensure that there's, there's proper security and safety for uh, the court officials and court operations. Uh, that item E, uh, we talked about last year, I believe, um, including the police officer salary is for a standard vehicle uh, and you're not paying for the, the actual vehicle. Um, this is kind of above and, and beyond what a normal cost is for a patrol car. So our, our normal patrol cars are now uh, Ford Explorers. So kind of taking it up a notch with a, uh, with a pickup truck uh, that's provided for the parks officer. And that gives us a utility to, to uh, tow our, our barricade trailer, which is a monster. And uh, our UTV, uh, there's a trailer for that. So in the, if the need arises to tow those items, uh, we have a truck for that purpose. Um, other indirect costs are uh, dispatch services, uh, computer services behind the scenes, that type of, of stuff is what falls into that. That again is kind of a, a support fee for the, uh, for the entire police officer staff. Uh, and then the last two items are just uh, price of doing business basically that, you know, we have phone, phone service, copier equipment for the stuff that we, you know, print off for, for the courts and such. Uh, the last item is, is kind of a newer item. Uh, it was presented before the, uh, the board some time ago of our uh, live scan machine, which is our electronic fingerprinting uh, equipment. Um, and that is a lease instead of an outright purchase on that. It's a, a lease. So when it kind of hits its end of life, uh, we, we get a new one, uh, you know, trade it out. So uh, that was the, the more efficient way to go. So that, that total cost is, uh, it, Steve may want to jump in at some point, but the, the total cost uh, money for that comes from the city's general revenue and is supplemented by the uh, public safety tax. As far as the numbers, I, I don't have those specifics, but that's uh, generally what, what it is. Uh, the county bills the city monthly, which is uh, that, that costs 408,899 per month. Um, and what we've done since the, uh, the COVID, uh, COVID phase we've had since roughly March, where a lot of the uh, court dates were canceled. So we reduce, uh, since we're not providing court security, we're not asking for that reimbursement. So th those costs are deducted out when we, uh, when we build the city. Uh, something that, that uh, kind of came up today uh, as, as city officials are working through, uh, through the budgeting uh, was for me to provide information related to reducing our budget by about 11%. Um, and really the only way for, for us to uh, make that happen would be to reduce the number of officers that are assigned uh, in the contract. And 11% uh, minus what the, the Prop P funds cover uh, would be for a reduction of three police officers, um, roughly $350,000 or so is what we could, could reduce it by, by uh, reducing our police staffing by three officers. And how that would, would uh, shake out, which currently each, uh, each squad, each shift has 10 officers on it and we staff five beats per shift, we would uh, reduce each shift by one officer and, and, and really drop our beat coverage to, uh, to four officers, you know, occasionally having, having five. Um, so right at the moment, I don't have total, uh, you know, exact figure numbers. Uh, you know, it was kind of toward the end of the day when, when I got the request to look into this uh, so our contracting uh, office, uh, Lieutenant Schaefer, who works in the police, police chief's office, uh, handles that. And he is going to work those numbers so that I can uh, bring those back to you for a more exact uh, figure as far as what that reduction could be. So that's what I have at the moment. Oh, in addition, uh, our, our uh, capital items, 
which is generally tools that we use, uh, you know, speed, speed equipment uh, that, that does our speed surveys, things like that. We were looking to add some of that equipment because, you know, as you can see, traffic is traffic related issues are, are the main concerns that, that we're dealing with a lot. Uh, and those tools are usually uh, very helpful to us to, to get stuff done efficiently and give us the proper feedback so we know if we need to do a f enforcement or if it's not an issue. Uh, so all of that equipment, uh, you, I believe you have a list for that. Um, I'm going to remove that from the request at this point uh, for consideration. Um, you know, again, we're, we're trying to be mindful of uh, the city and, and city officials attempting to uh, balance the budget and, and mine their, their expenses. So uh, at, at this point, this is, this is how we can contribute. Um, if we were to reduce uh, our staffing by those three officers, uh, they would not lose their jobs. Uh, being it, it's a contract with the County Police Department, we're a large agency um, the officers would, would be transferred, you know, out of the, their assignment here in Wildwood, you know, to other assignments in the department. So, um, there's no actually loss of, of a job. Uh, it's just, they would not be, you know, at our disposal for assignment here. So I believe that's all I got with relation to that. Again, it's kind of a work in progress. Um, but I know the city is kind of, uh, in a time crunch. So we want to, try and get that turned around to, uh, to the city as quickly as possible. Mr. Cross, anything uh, you'd like to add? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Captain Mundell. At, at this point, no. Um, I think you pretty well covered uh, what transpired today in, in conversations with you and the mayor, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, any member of the board has uh, to the extent I'm able to do it in a public forum. So I'm here to answer anything. I know I have a few, but Dave, I, I see you have a question, please. Yeah, uh, Steve, is it possible for us to transfer P money, Prop P money into the general fund in this instance to make up that 11%? Uh, Mr. Bertolino, um, I believe the short answer to that would be no. Um, as as the board knows, um, certainly that the Prop P funds are earmarked for specific purposes, um, public safety and police and so forth. So uh, to commingle those funds into the general fund um, is would go against the the intent and what the and 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 what those Prop P funds are used for. Uh, well, in fact, in fact, the communication uh, or the conversations we had today is, is to actually create a separate fund to allow some greater visibility and transparency with the use of those funds. There is a reserve um, of, of Prop P funds that has built up over the years since its inception in 2017, I believe. Um, but the, the police services contract uh, a portion of that to the tune of about $1.8 million a year uh, covers the police, that police service contract. And that is Prop P funds are used to do that, to cover that amount of, uh, of the contract that has grown from approximately three and a half million dollars in 2017 to just under, as you see here, $5 million in well, 2021. Steve, if I can answer, ask the question in a different way, um, Captain Mundell responded to the request to reduce the budget by 11%. If I'm right, Jim, is that what you're, you were asked? Yes. Uh, is there any way that we can use the reserve and Prop P money to either eliminate or at least reduce that 11% so that the overall operating budget uh, is receives the 11 percent reduction but yet we use prop p money to do it i mean uh, i heard you say steve that we use prop p money to pay the majority of this contract why can't we use that money um in this case to make up the 11 percent uh, requested reduction the prop p money does not pay 
for a majority of this contract. The property money is only 1.8 million a year. The contract's $5 million a year. So it pays for a portion of it, but a, a, a small portion. Uh, and, and that's all the money that we get per year. The rest of it is coming out of general funds. And as, as a result of that, um, and, and the police services part of the overall city operating budget, uh, there is a, there's a shortfall that exists as we spoke last evening. And, um, and we're working through that to identify areas where we can shore up that shortfall and uh, in conversations with the mayor and then the mayor's conversations with Captain Mundell. Um, this is and what, as Captain Mundell just explained, this is one way that uh, we can help to shore that up. But we are using 100% of the, of the Prop P funds available to the city to pay for a portion of, of the contract, the operating expenditures. I appreciate that. Thanks, Steve. Uh, but Scott, my, my gut reaction to all this is that uh, safety is, is paramount, that our police have done an excellent job and I would hate to see us in this hopefully temporary situation that we reduce our staffing, our police staffing simply to satisfy uh, the balanced budget. I think let's find it someplace else. I think uh, public safety has to be top priority for us. And I would hate to see our budget cut in any way. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Um, I, do, I do have a question. So uh, Jim, you said the, um, the cut is essentially three officers. Yes. Okay, uh, on an annual basis. So um thinking worst case scenario so if if that were what the council decides to do um I, I, and you had said the officers uh wouldn't lose a job they'd just be reassigned somewhere else which means the county pd is going to um reallocate those positions so if we did this um and then next year the budget situation is rosier um what is the likelihood we can get those positions back if they've already been reallocated somewhere else within the county? Well, I'll, I don't handle all the contracting. So I, my understanding is, uh, so if the contract takes these three positions out, the county police department will reduce its authorized strength by three positions. Okay. Now, generally there's, there's people retiring, there's, there's usually some positions open here and there so that the likelihood that anyone lose your job, you know, is, is pretty remote. Um, if the city were to want that back or want those positions back, there would have to be an addendum uh, to the contract uh, in order to bring them, them back. I don't know how quick, you know, all that would happen. Right. Uh, and it, it really, I'm sure it relies heavily on, on, uh, you know, revenue projections and sure. you know, the, the comfort level of the city or the council to, to put those positions back in place. Um, you know, it, it, it could take some time for that to, to occur, which okay. it, most likely it probably wouldn't be until, uh, you know, the end of the year, you know, beginning right. of 22, you know, that depending on where we're at in next year and what's happening, you know, how, how things shake out, uh, you know, probably more realistic to say they would be back in place in, in the beginning of 22. So uh, yeah. just kind of guessing there. Yeah, I guess, and I guess the backdrop of that question really is, um, you know, having dealt with this at a federal level, uh, when, when positions are moved around, I, I, I just, if a community were to get an extra officer or two, if that community were Wildwood, if we were to gain some, and then a year later, someone says, well, now we want them. I don't know how willing we'd be to let it go. I don't know. I just don't know how that works within the county, right? Um, so I guess part of my concern here is if this is a, and I don't know, is this like a one-year budget problem? And are we, if we do this that way, are we then creating a problem for ourselves down the road? Should the budget situation improve the following year? I guess. And um, so for for that reason, I I, I share uh, much of Dave's concern. Uh, you know, looking at this short term versus long term. So um, anyone else have any questions, commentary? 
And I, and I, you know, I understand budgets are important and we have to, you know, find ways to live within our means. I totally get it. Totally get it. Um, I'm just not sure this is where I would prefer as a citizen of Wildwood for that money to be taken from, but I'm, I'm assuming this is an across the board issue, Steve. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Collier, it is, um, unfortunately. And, yeah. um, and so what precipitated the conversation uh, earlier or at the end of the day today um, was that all the department heads um, were asked to go back and, and revamp their budgets uh, and were given some suggested guidelines in terms of a percentage reduction. And the mayor feels strongly that all departments uh, would would do the same thing, and that's what precipitated the conversation with Captain Mundell. So, Got yes, it. sir, it's, it's across the board. Okay. Anyone else comments, questions? Please, Dave. Yeah, at this point, Scott, I'd, I'd like to make a motion. Yep. And uh, that motion is that we accept the... Um, budget as proposed without any reductions. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second, thank you, Lynette. Motion is to accept the budget um, as proposed at $4.9 million annually. And is there discussion? Hearing none, we'll, I guess we'll move to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the uh, proposed budget as written, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 All those opposed, please raise your hand and say nay. One nay. Motion passes. I'm sure I'll hear from the mayor tomorrow, but that's okay. Well, yeah, and you know, Dave, I share your concern. I just think, from a public safety perspective, I'm, I'm, you know, I think this needs to have a little more fulsome discussion uh, at the council, most certainly. Um, yeah. And this is this is the starting point for that. Yeah. So, all right, dispose of that item. Uh, next up, improvement priorities for MoDOT roads. Rick, I'm going to guess this is yours. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Mr. Marshall, I will be glad to uh, say a few words about it, if that's okay. Please. Um, board members, some of you may recall, um, and I believe Councilmember Bertolino had requested this item for the agenda specifically. Um, the last two years, we have put together and reviewed a list of city priorities for improvements to MoDOT roads. Um, those roads primarily would be 109 and 100, but if, in case you're not thinking about it, it also includes Route BA, Bamba Park Drive, uh, Wild Horse Creek Road east of 109 is Route CC, and Route T, St. Albans Road um, out west. Those are all, all state routes. Um, but we put together this list um, a couple of years ago, primarily because there was a ballot issue that included a, a motor fuel tax increase. And we felt at the time that MoDOT might actually have some money to spend on our roads and we better have some idea what we'd want to do with that money. So we put the list together a couple of years ago initially. Um, and then last year, I think we brought it to you as well for a subsequent review. So the um, Essentially, the board is bringing it back to you this year again at the same time for your review and comment. And I would like to make a couple points. Um, there are two projects in particular that have been funded that were included on this list. So um, some of you are already aware, I'm sure, the city put in a fund federal funding application um, early, earlier this year for uh, the roundabout at Route BA South and 109. And we were successful in our application so that project, um, assuming it goes through city council and council approves the funding agreement, which I would expect to happen, um, would be funded through federal funding um, combined with 20% uh, 
funding from the city of Wildwood. And that's about a $1.5 million project. Uh, and it would be constructed in 2024. So that's, that's moving forward. And that was the good progress that we, that we saw this year. The other improvement that you need to be aware of is, and we've talked about this in past meetings as well. Um, I think you're aware of it at Route 109 and Route CC, MoDOT is planning a roundabout at that location. And they do have that project funded for 2022 construction. That's a $2.6 million project. So that is moving forward as well. Um, that's good news for that location. So I will defer to the board on your direction relative to this list. Or Mr. Bertolino, if you have anything you'd like to add. Um, I know you were involved a couple of years ago. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I, and just my, my comments is just to echo what you said. Um, for all new members on, on the board and so on, I just wanted to reiterate that um, the, the safety issues and road safety has been a major concern of this committee for a number of years, and that uh, the committee did do a, a great deal of work over the last few years to sort of itemize and prioritize, and, and Denny can speak to this as well, um, and John, uh, the things, the work that we've done to come up with this list, and it is being uh, addressed. I, and I get think citizens who say, why aren't you doing something about that particular intersection and so on. I, I just want to get across that the city is well aware of all of these major uh, issues and it's a matter of money and funding and time and uh, they are on the list and eventually uh, we're going to address them all. So if the board would like to go through them individually or, or have any greater discussion on the specific list, we can certainly do that. Um, Does anyone have any questions about um, the two lists? Or essentially they're the same list, Rick? No. Beg your pardon? You have two lists. We have prioritized, condensed, and then prioritized. Yeah, so the, I provided them both. So the prioritized and condensed list, we originally were working from the prioritized list, which was more specific projects. We had 16 individual projects listed. Gotcha. And then we tried to condense it down a little bit more in terms of um, bigger chunks of the areas for improvement. So okay. that was what was done, um, I believe last year. But um, as I said, some of the improvements that are included in there are funded. And then we're gonna talk a little bit later uh, in this meeting about uh, Route 100. So. Denny, please. Yeah, I just think that we've um, made some significant strides in working our way into this list, given that number one and number six are you know, funded, I guess you'd say, or they're, they're on track to be funded. And uh, two and three are recommended. There's some improvements there recommended in the MoDOT study on, on 100. So I think, I think we should feel good that we've made some inroads on that list anyway. Agreed. If I can make a comment. Please. Mr. Marshall, um, the one only thing I would maybe point out to the board would be we do receive a lot of complaints um, regarding the intersection of 109 and Etherton Road. Um, the uh, highly skewed intersection, which is south of BA North. Um, we talked about Etherton Road and the cut through traffic issue there between Wild Horse and 109. This is the 109 end of, of Etherton Road. So we, you know, we always get complaints relative to you know, why, why isn't there improvements planned at that location? Um, so that would be, if you were to ask me of potential projects to add, that would certainly be probably high on if not top on my list, potentially add to this if that was the desire of the board. Danny, please. Yeah, I, you know, I, that's an oversight on my part. I, I, would, I would agree with Rick that, and I drive that quite a bit. Um, that's probably as dangerous, in my opinion, as anything on 109. That situation at Ethelton Road. That, that's all I have. Well, I note that's not on here. Should, um, should we add it? And we've got 
two items that are funded. Uh, Dave, please. Yeah, just a, a comment, Rick, and maybe uh, to you for, for clarification. I had a, a, a citizen call me today who's in, whose name will remain anonymous, but his initials are Ed Marshall. And uh, Ed, <laughs> it's been around a while. He, he had a concern, and I think it was a legitimate one, about the, the fact that we have used uh, he asked if we had used federal money to use on the bridge expansion on Etherton Road. And if the answer is yes, are we now restricted from any work that we can do in terms of restricting traffic, et cetera, on that road because we have accepted federal funds to improve the roadway? I guess that's to you, Rick. Um, well, we did, we did uh, one, the one answer, well, the one portion of the answer is very easy. Yes, we did have federal funding in place and we used federal funding to construct that project. Um, as far as restrictions, um, you know, we, we do still have the restriction in place. I know Mr. Marshall has raised uh, his opinion about the fact that we restricted through traffic on that road. I'm not aware of any reason that our use of federal funds would eliminate or, or disallow that restriction. I've not heard that before, frankly. Um, I, mean, I could certainly double check on that, but that would be news to me if that was indeed the case. If you would, because I'm sure Ed is listening in tonight and I told him I'd bring this up. So if you don't mind checking that out and see if we, and it's a legitimate concern, if we do have some restrictions because of that federal funding, we probably should be aware of that uh, up front. I can certainly double check on that. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Uh, do we wish to make any changes to this list? Any additions, deletions? Hey, Rick, can I ask, did, did we uh, share this list with the new uh, district engineer? I have not submitted it to MoDOT for some time, no. So we could certainly do that. Since since there's been some uh, some change there, maybe we could bring that up in the next discussion with them. I think that would make good. You're talking about providing it to Ryan Pearson, the area engineer. Yeah. Yes, let's, we can certainly do that. Danny, please. Yeah. Uh, do we need a? I would I would like us to add Etherton Road and 109 intersection to do some, do some type of safety improvements there. I'd like to add that to the list. I don't know if we need a motion to do that uh, or if we just do it. I think we need a motion if we're gonna make a change to the document. Okay. Rick? Well, I'd like to make a motion then that we add uh, the uh, intersection of Etherton Road and 109 to the list and uh, probably somewhere in the middle of that list, I think it's a, it's a specific project that I think probably deserves some attention somewhere. I'm not sure if we, have, if we, if we need to go through a, you know, how, how we decide where to put it in the list. If that... Dave? I don't think, uh, Denny, I think we didn't prioritize this list. Is that right? In your, from your perspective, in terms of implementing things, does it matter? You're, uh, you're really cutting out on this. Yeah, you cut out on us, Denny. Yeah. I, I think Denny was asking, was there a did the priority of the listing impact how we would budget? And I think the answer, Rick, is no. I think we listed them all as important. Okay. Um, and then as money and, and federal dollars become available and so on, we would tackle the issues uh, as we were financially able to do so. I, I do recall that we went through an effort and individually you provided your rankings and then Collectively, I think we we ranked them from one to from top to bottom that way. Um, so we could certainly do that again if the board desires, or you agree it should move in the middle. Or um, I mean, it's it's your document, so we can certainly 
advise it as the board feels necessary. Scott, the, the, the priority, prioritizations discussion from previous boards has been long and arduous. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd almost hope that we wouldn't go through that again, but to, to, uh, to Denny's point, um, it, it is a priority. Um, and if we, if we stuck that one in the middle there someplace, maybe suck it in at six or seven, I don't think to me, there would be no objection. Uh, Denny, would you accept that as a friendly amendment to your uh, motion? I certainly would, yes. Okay. So there we have it. The, the motion is now to add um, uh, Etherton Road at uh, 109, um, slot it in the middle. Uh, do I have a second? Just need a hand wave. Jeff Baker, thank you, sir. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. All those in favor of adding um, um, the 109 Etherton Road to the to the middle, which would become the new number, should we shall say seven, on the prioritized list, uh, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Those opposed? No opposition. Uh, motion passes. And keeping in the road theme, Rick, the uh, MoDOT uh, 100 study. We will move on. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Um, the next item is, I believe, an update for the board. Um, you may recall we've had previous discussions at meetings relative to potential improvements to Route 100, primarily west of 109. Um, those discussions focused in large part on potential to signalize Route T, St. Albans Road and Pond Road. But more recently, there was discussion about adding left turn lanes in the two lane segment of, of Route 100, specifically at Woodland Meadows Drive. Um, and just to, just to be just a reminder, because that is a state route, MoDOT is controls any improvements uh, relative to that section of Route 100 or all of Route 100 in Wildwood, frankly. So last year, in response to these concerns, we did finally get some progress with MoDOT. Um, MoDOT hired an engineering firm by the name of Access Engineering, and they did complete a review that looked at Route 100 essentially from 109 to the county line. And after many months of waiting and waiting patiently and making a sunshine request to MoDOT, we were finally, we finally received a portion of that report that was completed earlier. Um, so I did provide a copy of that in my memorandum to the board. And I just wanted to be clear, if you read that report, it is not a full report. Um, for whatever reason, we're still not entirely sure MoDOT was reluctant to release the report. We had to file a sign request. They ultimately consented to releasing, releasing a partial report. So they redacted many of the pages. Um, I believe most of the pages were, were relative to crash history and crash rates potentially. That seemed to be the trigger. They did not want to release that, that part of the report. But the, the, the meat and potatoes of the report, the recommendations are sure are in there for your consideration, but just to summarize what it says, um, it recommends for Route T and Pond Road, instead of signals, MoDOT has, has in large part are, are recommending the installation of what they call J-turns. And this is something they've done a lot on four lane divided roadways, um, even in, more in the rural parts of of the state or in, in areas like Wildwood. So J turns are recommended for St. Albans Road, Route T, and then and Pond Road. Um, so the, the crossovers at those locations would be removed and the left turns would have to go and utilize a U-turn movement that's, that, that's built in at, in the median. So it reduces those broad or eliminates the, the potential for broad angle crashes 
And those are the serious crashes that usually result with serious injury or death. So um, the goal with the J turns is safety. It's all about safety. Um, and I think they've had good success with them where they have used them elsewhere throughout the state. Um, so that was the recommendation there. It's not signals, it's, it's J turns um, at those locations. So the cost of those two improvements would be 2.3 million. Now the other portion of the report looked at the installation of left turn lanes. The one that's first and foremost was Woodland Meadows, um, but I, I felt it was, it was nice that they did look at the entire segment of two lane Route 100. And in the study, they came up with a total of four locations where they recommend the installation of, of left turn lanes. So in, in addition to Woodland Meadows being recommended, it was Boonis Lane, Hankin Road, and Hawks Rest Road, those locations. So there's four left turn lanes and the cost of that improvement was $2.1 million. So uh, area engineer Ryan Piercy was at the city council meeting last month, um, did talk in large part about the report. And uh, it's great that they're making some progress and acknowledging the need for improvements. The um, downside is that they don't yet have any funds committed to actually constructing them. Um, nonetheless, their budgeting is, is always fairly, fairly uh, constrained for the next three years. Usually after that, they start to pull in new projects. So it, it's usually at least three years before you get something added to their program. Hope is now that they will start looking and um, looking at all the seats and the cushions of their coat, their, their uh, couches and see if they can find some change to put towards these projects in, in coming years. So um, that's the um, update with regard to Route 100. Um, if there's any specific questions or I failed to mention anything, I'll be glad to take any questions. Questions for Rick. And Rick, thank you for bringing this to, to our attention. That uh, I know they haven't attached funding or a timeline to it, but that is good news. I know Route 100 has been in the news recently. So, Denny, please. Yeah. Hey, Rick, I, I've got a question that's it's on Route 100, but it's not, it's, it has nothing to do with the study, but I wanted to bring it up. And I meant to do it. I meant to do it on the previous item. I forgot. Um, at West Glen Farms on Route 100, when I pull up to that intersection, there's all this vegetation in the medians, and I think I personally think it's a safety issue because it, when you when you're on the west side of that intersection, those medians have I think they're burning bushes or there's a lot of high vegetation, which prevents you from getting a, a visual of the whole intersection as you pull up to it. And I'm just wanting to get your opinion on that because to me is there's 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 visually some obstructions to being able to you know clearly see that whole intersection as you approach it. So is that something or is that vegetation that the city may, has planted and put in or is that MoDOT or what? So yeah, Denny, the um the vegetation at Westland Farms was installed by the city. Um, well, I guess uh, probably on a couple instances. Um, so there's been a couple efforts there to, to beautify that that area. But the more recent work was done in I believe 2016 under a MODOC project, um, the Great Streets project. But I think if you're referring to uh, primarily the eastbound direction, right? Correct. Yeah, on on the west side, eastbound. Yeah. It's, I guess I would say, I know I've been kind of keeping an eye on that. I um, don't know that we've addressed it or gone so far as to cut it back, but I think um, it's certainly something we need to keep an eye on and maybe take a closer look at um, relative to the fact that it is getting larger and has that potential to obstruct line of sight. And that's certainly very critical in that area. Um, so we can take a closer look at that. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd appreciate it. I just, I just have this feel as I approach it, and maybe it's just me, but 
I'd like to see a whole intersection as I'm approaching it. So if somebody's running a red light from the other direction, at least I, I don't get that comfort. I'm not in a comfort zone when I approach it from, you know, headed what east. But I just want to bring that up. No, good point. Please, Lynette. I have a question. So it seems like these... Um, uh, state fire these funded uh, projects take a while and so what are the uh, what are the options in the meantime for highway 100 for the safety um yeah I, if i can get it, jump in there the mayor made a point at the council meeting of, of that very thing Raising that very issue, maybe, I could be wrong. Maybe Councilmember Clark said the same as well. Um, so I think, from the perspective of the department, and I know Captain Mundell is on the same page. We've talked about, and we're going to complete a review of that section of Route 100 to see if there's things that can be done. I think there there is a potential um, there, and we want to make sure there's 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 not something that that could be done that's low cost that would have an impact. So we're gonna make that review. I tried to uh, encourage, and I've, I've made the request of, of Ryan Piercy at MoDOT to join us in that effort essentially. And do, there's actually a formal process called a, a road audit, a safety road audit or safety road assessment or road safety assessment. Um, and I've asked, Ryan Piercy, if he would participate with us in that process. And he was receptive and it sounded like they have done that with other cities. So I'm optimistic that they will do that with us. And again, that's more of a formal process where you designate a team, kind of an inter interdisciplinary team, it's usually engineers, law enforcement, most mostly. And you, as a team, you review a segment of roadway for safety improvements and then essentially put a report uh, summarizing any findings and any, any recommendations together. So um, I know the mayor was pushing to have something done quickly and I think we can do uh, a review on our own relatively quickly. The, uh, the, the road with safety assessment or audit if it's done might take a bit longer if MoDOT agrees to do that. Um, and, they, and they did, when we brought it up, Ryan Pierce did seem agreeable to doing that. I just haven't heard back from him yet formally. Yeah, I, I'm just, thank you, Rick. I'm, I'm just curious, you know, what the, uh, what the variables are that uh, makes the, this section um, so dangerous, you know, as regard to uh, people traveling through there, you know, is it the, the volume or uh, speed or, you know, uh, other variables like that? Or is it just the, the design of the, the highway and the age? I don't, I don't know. I'd say all of the above. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. <clears throat> the speed is certainly, in my opinion, when you look at 100, it's speed and volume. It's a newer road than 109. 109 is it's not as much the speed. Certainly the volumes are high, but the road is older. It's not as, as wide open, doesn't have the full shoulders that Route 100 has. So, but the, the speeds on 100, I'm sure, are significantly higher than, than 109. Mm -hmm. So I guess these types of things will be uh, in consider or under consideration as you do uh, a road audit or a review. That's um, a question. Sorry. Yeah, well, I, I think the mayor's expectation is that that um, will be a report provided back in response to his request. So that's that's my expectation. Um, if I can get MoDOT to commit to doing the road safety audit, all the better. Um, but I think even if they don't move ahead or they don't agree to move ahead in, in short order, um, I think Captain Nundell and Public Works Department would like to do our own, our own investigation and provide some ideas back. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Any other questions for Rick? So I don't think there, uh, we have an action item for this, right, Rick? Um, no, it was more provided for your information. For information. Um, okay. All right, seeing no more questions, we'll 
move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the uh, the speed the LED speed limit signs I had mentioned earlier. Yes, and uh, thank you, Mr. Marshall. Um, and uh, as you recall from previous meetings, I think in July we talked about Wellington Road and some of concern there with regard to speeding. And um, we proposed at that meeting using these uh, LED radar signs that are solar powered. And I basically just wanted to report back that we, we do have one now installed on Ellington Road. And it seems to be working or functioning as intended. Uh, we installed it with our contractor and um, got it operating operational and um, I'm monitoring it right now. Um, it has some functional functionality that we haven't totally explored yet. It, it will record, it can actually work and record a speed survey itself. Um, so we have that ability to, to do that with that in place sign. Um, it does flash your speed based on the radar unit that's in, in the, uh, the unit. And um, I think it works pretty well. So um, what I was proposing uh, with my memorandum was to actually look at another type of an LED sign, which is um, an LED, a solar powered LED speed limit sign. So the manufacturers have brought out newer signs that have the LEDs embedded in the border of the sign. And so it en en enhances the uh, ability of the motors to see the sign, obviously, because um, they're solar powered, like the one we installed, it's fairly easy to, to to install, don't need to run power to the sign. So um, exploring the option of maybe using those as well as a tool for speed enforcement. Um, the more tools in the toolbox, the better. Um, the cost of the LED, the solar powered LED speed limit signs are about $1,600. And that's more than half what we paid for the radar sign. So it's, it's cheaper yet. Um, I think what we'd like to use them on is residential type streets, probably. Um, Thunderhead Canyon might be a great candidate. Um, you know, those locations where we're getting, um, maybe where the speed survey that we get back does show that 85th percentile to be at 30 or above, say, um, would be good candidates. Um, so that's that's what we're planning to do. So I didn't really have it on here as a formal request um, necessarily. It's something I can fund out of our uh, existing budget um, without too much difficulty. If the board would like to make a motion supporting that, that would be fine as well. Um, wouldn't probably be a bad thing, um, but I would like to move forward with that and, and find a couple locations where we can install them and, and see how they go over. And again, these would be semi-permanent where we could install them and then uh, effectively you know, work with the Wildwood Precinct to determine locations and then potentially move them as necessary um, to help with enforcement. So if there's any questions, I'd be glad to do my best to answer them. I, I think this is a uh, good stuff. So, um, Rick has, uh, you know, brought this report to us. I think it would be good if we agree with it um, to to offer uh, our support as a public safety committee. And I would at this time entertain such a motion to, after which we generate discussion. I see Dave is, is moving the same. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll so move. And Lynette has seconded. So a motion in support? Yes, a discussion. Please. I will, I will, uh, <laughs> this is awful. Is there actually a word conspicuity? <laughs> I didn't double check it, but that's hard for me to say too. I, I avoid saying it. <laughs> you what? I avoid saying it personally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just wanted you to know I read the whole memo there, Rick. <laughs> the grammar police have struck. They have. <laughs> so we have a motion uh, of support for the purchase of these signs. I think it's a very good idea. Do we have any discussion? I guess that my statement there was discussion. So I got ahead of myself. Sorry. Throw the Roberts rules of order at me anytime you wish. Any other commentary or discussion? 
Seeing none, we'll move for the vote in support of this initiative. All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed, raise your hand and say no. It's unanimous and passes. Um, yeah, and I, I think to your point, Rick, um, especially if, I know uh, Jim's gonna have the PD out there doing a little enforcement work, particularly in those uh, morning and afternoon hours um, on Thunderhead Canyon. But when we get those, I think this will be a good consideration for that area, that street. Yeah, very well, maybe. Yeah, all right, excellent. And addition of Taylor Road, I think uh, we had a, a similar issue last time where this time, uh, Rick, you're proposing the addition of a street um, uh, to modify the traffic schedule. Is that correct? I am. And I, I to be honest, I, I apologize. I should have included this in the prior month's request. It is very similar to what we brought to you before. I didn't move that to council yet. I was realizing that Taylor Road I actually was, I was thinking I needed to wait on the road. We have not added Taylor Road to our list of through streets on our traffic schedules. And I was not, it was not, it's not occurring to me that we actually have taken over all of, of Taylor Road, but we, we actually do now um, maintain Taylor Road through Brightleaf subdivision, which is the section north of 100 over to Route 109. Okay. And the request pertains to that section as well as the section from 100 down to Manchester Road through Town Center. So it's the entire length of Taylor Road um, is what the request pertains to. It's just adding it as a through street and that just provides that extra measure that we can enforce stop signs um, that are installed on the side streets of, of those through roads. So if, if the board approves the recommendation, I'll package this with the prior request in an ordinance to get the traffic schedules modified accordingly. Okay. So um, I, I believe we can accept this recommendation as a motion. Uh, do I have a second? Thank you, Lynette, we have a second. Any questions or discussions for Rick? Um, essentially, it's just adding Taylor Road to, I believe it's um, section five. That's correct, yeah. Rick? Okay, and we had done that before. See no questions or, or uh, statements, um, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the recommendation uh, from Rick, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Tell Rick he has to do it again. Nope, <laughs> passes unanimously. You're lucky. Thank you. <laughs> I keep forgetting these meetings are recorded. I'm probably gonna get fired. <laughs> oh, well. You should be so lucky, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, it was a volunteer position. Um, okay, so next order of business, deer distance sampling population study. Um, I think this is on here primarily as a request from Captain Mundell, and it was more relative to potentially doing some additional work yet this year. Um, with, with regard to deer sampling and, and population study. So, Captain, do you want to you want to speak to this? Yeah, uh, it might be uh, <laughs> no longer necessary at this point. Uh, <clears throat> so, the uh, deer subcommittee had moved forward with some recommendations um, that has not been finalized uh, by the council. Um, I know there were some changes to ordinances, things like that. Uh, but part of that program was to, to find our baseline for deer population, which would require a, uh, a deer count. Uh, and there's a method to doing that. Sergeant Wendling is, is uh, the expert at that. Um, there is certainly a, a cost to that to have officers uh, who have been trained. And I believe we've already determined that uh, using our, our trained officers to, to make those deer counts is cheaper than, than hiring an organization or, or a company to do it. Um, so that provides our, our baseline. Um, once the other uh, uh, programs are put in place, we would do another one you know, next fall. Now, 
we're at the point where we would really need to do it pretty much next month, um, which is going to require a, a chunk of money. And obviously the, the timing is, uh, is not very good. Um, so I, I don't know if it really needs to go to the uh, DEER subcommittee to, to discuss this again. Um, again, this, this was put on the agenda before uh, the budget stuff that, uh, that I presented. So, uh, or was made aware of to, to try and uh, rework for, for that quick presentation I gave earlier. Um, so if we don't do that, that deer count, uh, basically we're moving the project, you know, down the road again, you know, where it would probably be next, next November, where we would actually, uh, start. Now, again, we don't have ordinances in place at the moment. Um, but we're, you know, looking for the opportunity to, to try and get on top of that, anticipating that those, uh, those, uh, uh, mitigation techniques we're going to, you know, pass through the, uh, through the council. So, right. uh, Sergeant Wendling, is there anything you, you want to add to that better explain it? No, just like you said, it'll, it'll just put us back, uh, with the data for, uh, to be able to measure effectiveness of, of the different, uh, right. measures and techniques that we're going to put in place. So really that's, uh, we, we're limited in the in the time frame. The studies have to be conducted from late November to um, early February is really the, the feasible uh, time range that you have to, to conduct the studies. So the, the window is relatively small and that's the only time of year that, that you can conduct the uh, population studies. So uh, that's, that's kind of what uh, puts us in a pickle with all that. Thank you. Well, in order to know whether we've had any effectiveness or not, um, you know, we're going to need to know where we started. Uh, my fear is, uh, or my concern is, you know, I think we'll have something ready. I know I'm able, and Dave and, and Jeff, and you guys uh, are on the DEER subcommittee, you know, jump in here. I mean, I, I don't know when we're going to, we're obviously trying to meet, I think, again, next week is the hope um, to to get next steps and get some answers for uh, uh, the council members that we discussed uh, last time. Uh, but I, I would hate to lose this opportunity to get a deer count uh, because then that just really sets us back practically a year. And I don't know that we want that to be the case. Um, just the price tag on that uh, yeah. Marshall would, would probably be about twenty thousand dollars. So that's you're, you're putting teams out, yep. doing uh, you know multiple counts. In this is where maybe Sergeant Welling can can jump in. Um, the the notes I had we're looking at ten square mile areas. We're doing twelve surveys. Okay. For three different areas, so we're talking 36 surveys over a five-hour period. So it obviously the the hours add up, yeah. you know, to a point where we're paying somebody to do that. So we're looking at potentially 360 man hours. Okay. Um, would prop P funds be available to fund that? Is that an appropriate use? Uh, I believe there was discussion that that would be okay. I, I don't know what the balance is on that. Uh, I don't know if, if Rick or Mr. Cross could address that. It may just be bad timing at the moment that right, uh, right. this might have to get put off for another year. So yeah. Yeah. Given the cost. So in, as a 2020 expenditure captain, if we, if we got out there and did the work before the end of the year, uh, it, yeah, it would be a 2020 expenditure. Now, a lot of things have, have happened, and you know, I I'm, uh, would defer to to Mr. Cross. Uh, you know, due to what we experienced due to to the uh, pandemic, that the the budget has really uh, taken some hits. Um, there was, you know, overtime funding originally budgeted, and a lot of that was not done because 
you know, most of our events were, were canceled, uh, courts been canceled. Yeah. So I, I, I can't speak to the availability of, of funding at this point. So I defer to Steve. Sure. Steve, please. Mute. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time. Well, I'm usually, I was, it wasn't unmuted, but then Dawn came in and was talking and I muted it. So you didn't hear that conversation, but anyway, sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marshall. Um, uh, Captain Mundell is right. Um, the overtime that is in the current 2021 budget is 360 hours, which totals $20,000. Um, it would be better to, if you could, to move that to 2020. Um, Way. Captain Mundell is correct. I mean, we've, we've, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, if if, no, I'm saying, I'm saying you, if you could spend that in 2020, you would be better off. It's in the 2021 budget. What I'm saying is, and I'm following along with what Sergeant Wen, Wenling said, um, you know, if the timing is right to do it end of November or something, get it done. Um, as you all may know uh, there's there's some additional funding that may be coming into 2020 as it relates to the two trillion dollar um stimulus right that was passed by the federal government which then trickled down to the state which then trickled down to the county which then is trickling down to the municipalities we have applied for funding uh it it appears that we're going to get it we they have just started <clears throat> giving that funding out we haven't received our yet um so um, if it happens, that, that is a significant help to 2020. So if there was a time to spend that $20,000, my recommendation to the board would be to try to do it in 2020 versus 2021. Okay. Because right now, Captain Mundell, that was something that we had not spoken about. I, I was literally looking at that on my other screen over here. Um, about that and, and mentioned it to Dawn, but she ran away screaming because she's had so <laughs> work, uh, worked so much on it. But um, yeah. that would be my recommendation. If you were able to do it in 2020, and if you were able to squeeze in for the end of the year, I'd go for it. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm going to um, accept that as a friendly motion to the board that we attempt um, to get the deer survey uh, started and completed in the 2020 budget cycle, um, pending acquisition of funds. I'll second that. Second. Any discussion or questions on the motion before us so that we're clear that we are recommending that this be done in 2020, uh, pending acquisition of funds. Seeing none, we will take a vote. All those in favor of conducting the deer count in 2020 as proposed, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Or actually, I wanna be out there next winter doing it myself. Okay, <laughs> motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't see any other items on the agenda. I know you're disappointed with that. Sir, Jim. I have uh, just two information items. Uh, October 24th, which is Saturday, uh, we'll be conducting a, uh, one of the DEA sponsored uh, drug take back events. So uh, we'll be passing that information along to the city to put on the website, but that's an opportunity for, for residents to uh, come by city hall between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and dump off any uh, old unused uh, prescription type meds that they want to get rid of uh, to prevent any kind of abuse or pollution to the uh, water system. So uh, that's an annual event. Actually, it's usually twice a year. Uh, this year they had to cancel the April event. So we're, we're not sure if this is going to be a, a doubled up event where there's a lot of stuff coming in or if, if uh, it'll, it'll uh, be normal. We have also uh, earlier this year, uh, placed a uh, drug take back box in the city hall lobby. So that's, we're emptying that pretty much uh, weekly. So that's seen a lot of, uh, a lot of traffic there as far as stuff getting dumped off. Good. Um, the other item was uh, Halloween obviously is coming up. So we don't know uh, 
how people will handle Halloween this year. Either you'll let your kids go out or you won't. Either you'll hand out candy or you won't. Um, the department always, uh, you know, acquires a large quantity of uh, candy. Um, so our uh, neighborhood policing officers will be out on Halloween, uh, you know, as safely as possible, given the opportunity to hand out uh, candy. We, we won't do a, uh, in the past we've done safety centers or we've uh, set up sites where, where the kids could go. This would be pretty much just uh, as part of their roving patrol anyway, we'll ensure that our officers, uh, you know, can hand out a treat. Um, and they pretty much specified, uh, you know, our, our more populated subdivisions to uh, kind of target. So uh, we'll be out and about that night, obviously. So that's all I had to add. Great. Anybody have anything else for the good of the group? No, nope, seeing nothing. Uh, everybody, I guess uh, we shall, uh, we'll adjourn. I will assume no one will object. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, everyone's time and effort. Excellent meeting. Nice to meet you, Steve. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your support. Right. Thanks, Scott. Take care, all. See you. Thank you. Thanks, all.